Hello! Welcome to The Vocalist! For those of you new here, my name is Bethany. For those of you returning, let's get it out of the way. <laughs> yes, I got my hair cut. Yes, it is way shorter than I wanted, but these things happen. So, change is good. Hair grows back. Please be nice <laughs> while I figure out what to do with it. Um, today, we are listening to the wonderful Jessie J. This is by no means the first time I've heard this incredible singer. I honestly think she is one of the more underrated vocalists of our generation, just because she is very popular, but I feel like people take for granted how good of a singer she is just because she makes everything sound so easy. We're gonna listen to her sing a Whitney Houston cover. This particular video is from an acoustic concert she did earlier in the year, but the reason I was prompted to listen to Jessie J today was I recently watched, listened to her interview on the Diary of a CEO podcast. It's fascinating. She talks about different aspects of her career, some personal struggles, um, why she sort of disappeared from the industry for a bit. It was just really interesting to hear in her own words what went on behind the scenes. So I'm going to link that interview below. But yeah, let's do this. Okay, before I even push play, I want you to look at her body and her posture. I don't get to talk about this very often because I feel like a lot of these videos people are moving or it's a very formal performance, but she has just the slightest tilt forward, which a lot of singers do because that helps to sort of breathe more into your back ribs. It allows for more expansion. So we're off to a good start. All right, here we go. Oh, this is gorgeous. <laughs> okay, we're gonna go all the way back. I want you to just listen to how effortlessly she goes back and forth between more of like a, a lighter head voice sound to more presence in her in her sound in her voice. All she's doing, so whenever we create those breathier sounds, you're just letting a little bit more air escape through your vocal cords. And so in order to eliminate that, you bring your cords fully together, which requires just a little bit more air pressure and a little bit more tension. We're going back. So really light and airy. Right there, she's starting to put a little bit more pressure. There too. Okay, real quick, I want to talk about her gorgeous bone structure. <laughs> I, I harp on this all the time, and the reason I do is, especially as a teacher, when singers come to me and like, can I actually get better? What's in here is such a small part of the equation. And so learning to understand space and placement and tension and all these different things help singers become better. When you have, it's almost like a square, like she's got these gorgeous high cheekbones, a wide palate, her jaw just drops perfectly. Like it just bloop down and then back up. She's not pulling it forward. And so she, it's like, it's like a box. It's like a perfect space for resonance. And so what I love here is that she's just, she's keeping her hands on her hips, allowing her rib cage, like, space to take in air and then her face is just so neutral. Like I said, I think she is a highly underrated singer of our generation. I don't really need to learn. Oh. 
I liked that. Hold on. <laughs> it was like, it wasn't a grunt. It was just sort of like, it was attitude. I liked it. Okay, we're going back. If I if I don't say this now, I'm gonna forget. What I loved, um, where was it? We're just going back a lot. I like when artists give themselves the freedom to like deviate from the time, like the structured time of the melody. So she, let me, I'll just play it. Okay, so after she sings follow, I'll go back a little, she gives herself just an extra little pause. And in order to make up for it, kind of like rubato and classical music, she just, she says the words in her own timing rather than like the strict timing that, you know, the songwriters initially intended. I don't want to have to go. I don't know if we're gonna see more of that later on but she has quite the agility in her voice so I hope she incorporates some more riffs later on in this just so you can hear more of it especially if this is like your first time hearing her one thing I want to mention you'll notice when she was really belting out that chorus she leaned back just a smidge there are a lot of different schools of thought on like a singer's head position. Some people like to keep their chin down in an attempt to keep the larynx low. Other people really push back their chin. I feel like this was perfection because really where your neck sort of meets your head, <laughs> like it should almost be kind of like, hmm, I'm probably not going to come up with the right word for this. but. Your head really technically, based off of the weight of your head and like the position, like where it sits on your neck, there is a little bit of lean back. And so yes, some singers really go extreme one way or the other, but that is a beautiful technique for really just helping to make sure your larynx and your neck, everything is just a nice tall column that you're not like crunching off any part of your larynx or the pharynx. And so whenever you see a singer do that, I've heard, maybe it's just the circles I run in. I don't know. I've heard people like criticize that neck position or that head position and there really isn't anything wrong with it. It's a, it's a very smart way of just keeping yourself in alignment. Anywho. like all of the colors in her voice it's so beautiful and I love she she's like picking and choosing different words she's like 
holding them longer, cutting them off, like coloring them with more nasal resonance. It's oh, so good. Right to the You break down my walls with the strength of your love. Mm -hmm. I Ooh, so right there, she, hmm, she's so smart. When you sing an ooh vowel, it's the one vowel that will automatically flip your voice into the next register, probably like a whole step sooner than you want it to. And so she went ahead and embraced the headiness of that tone, but she was still mixing to give it more presence so that it blended well with what came before it. That's one of the, that's what I was talking about, her riffs. Let's hear that again. I want to point something out. When uh, she, both times, she breathed before the word hide. I tell this to my students all the time. <laughs> Breathe like a diva, okay? Diva is a good thing. I don't like to use diva in a negative sense. A diva is someone who knows exactly what they need to sound their best. And so we get so tied up and caught up in like, oh, I have to make it through this phrase or that phrase. Most people don't care. <laughs> I said it, okay? Yes, there are certain pieces or like arias in classical music. There is a standard in performance practice of where to breathe, etc. But ultimately, like people just care about you sounding your best. Like they want to hear what you have to offer. And so in this case, she knew she's like, I could probably make it through this phrase, but I know what's coming next and I know what I want to do with it. So I'm going to take a little breath. And not one person in that audience got up and said, you shouldn't have breathed there. You know, like, so I I love that, I love that she just gave herself permission to sing the song the way she wants to sing it. I'm sorry, we're not, oh, we're going back. I don't even want to get to the end of this. I want to play this over and over and over again.
Oh my goodness. Hold on. Okay, I've got it queued up to that last chorus. Brace yourselves. I am probably going to pause a lot, okay? Just stay with me here. There. Oh, I love that. So she was in a full belt and then she, you can hear her transition into a mix right there. And then look what she does, just coloring those words, changing her resonance, like, one more time. And then she's got that incredible growl. Ugh. give that away at all. You had no idea that was coming. One more, hold on. If I don't have you. Oh man. That is what I live to see and hear from singers. She has so many colors and textures in her voice, but she also, she's so soulful and so passionate and every single word was an opportunity. Every single note is an opportunity. I also really liked this song for her because her stage presence really does remind me a little bit of Whitney Houston. Like, you can tell she's having fun, but she she picks her moments where she just really digs deep into the song and into what she's singing. There are a ton of phenomenal singers in the world. I, I mean, obviously, I, I get to hear them. But finding a singer with this voice, this artistry, this soulfulness, and this stage presence, I feel is a very rare thing. And I'm talking very slowly because I'm racking my brain trying to like think of singers that perhaps share this similar quality. I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments because I don't, I don't want to put any ideas in your head. I want to hear what you guys think. Anywho, that's it for today. Um, I did see a number of other recordings from this same performance online, so... I don't know, I might go have a listen after this. But thank you guys so much for watching with me and hopefully I will see you next time.